watching ERPF.com. All right, David, so tell me a little bit about your Star Wars jackets that we've got here. Um, well, we've got a few. Uh, mainly the, the eye catchers seem to be what's going on with the stormtroopers here. And uh, people have heard, yeah, I'm, I'm doing the trooper suits, I'm doing the trooper suits. So these are our prototypes. Okay. And uh, I think that they're a pretty damn good starting point. Um, you know, a, a few things. Uh, I know that some of the buttons here are too large. There's, there's some colors that are missing, blues and whites. But that aside, which is an easy fix, overall what we've got is the form molded leather meant to look like the hard armor in the film. Same with the shoulders. This is all one piece of leather. And uh, all of the areas here, they're all adjustable. Okay. Whether or not I keep the buckles on the inside or not is still to be decided. Okay. I may actually complete the suits with having the white leather wrap all the way around as they are in real life. But there's also a comfort factor that I have to approach. So, but we'll see, we're still working on it. I mean, the front panel here, it peels open to reveal the zipper underneath and the belt is attached to the jacket as well. And it zips right up to the collar. The armor plate is removed from the shoulder and the armpit, okay. and that allows you to unzip the jacket wow. completely. Cool. And it's the same with the black and the white one. Okay. And if you'll permit me, yeah. you can see that we've done the same. Oh wow, that's awesome. See that? That's also, fantastic. Also with the back. So we're not compromising on details. I mean, how could I with the RPF? You guys will tear me to pieces <laughs> exactly. if we do. So. Now, how do you mold something like this? How do you make this kind of detail? It's, um, it's all done by hand. Wow. Um, and um, I, my initial thought was that this whole rectangle would have to be its own piece stitched onto the back. So we got really lucky with being able to make the one piece, but we had to do the bricks on the oil sign here. We had to do the bricks separate and insert them. So, you know, again, like all things, we, we have an approach that we use for the leather goods, but each suit really is its own new world and we have to start <laughs> from scratch because what works with Batman or Rinsler or Captain America just didn't work with the Stormtrooper. Gotcha. So, you know, back to square one, but you know, we're getting it, we're getting it. Right on. And uh, another neat one, uh, this one here, it's a rather aggressive. My uh, favorite, yeah, Darth Maul. Yeah. This one's a <laughs> lot of fun. So, you know, what would Darth Maul look like Topless, you know, and there's artwork circulating out yeah. there. And when I saw it, that's that's a badass. That's a jacket. That's a jacket. So here it is. It's our Darth Maul uh, Cafe Racer. Love it. Easy to wear, simple jacket. And not only has it got the tattoos, but I wanted to keep a constant with the Star Wars universe. So we added the ribbing okay. into the sides. Just that I made it thinner, as opposed to the Empire jackets having the big bulkier one. But I mean, it's a constant in the Star Wars universe, so why not use it? It's a badass detail, yeah, right? Yeah, love it. And love it. Uh, yeah, and being motorcycle wear, all of the, the body armor's inside, oh, wow. same with the back, and it is also That's all crazy. removable. That's amazing, love it. Yeah, lots of fun, lots of fun. Cool. Okay, so David, tell me about your Rinsler suit. Well, the Rinsler suit, it's the continuation of our Tron Legacy line, where last year you saw the Sam Flynn yeah. and, and Quora suits. So, I mean, sales are going very well. Uh, public has reacted beautifully to those suits, so it made sense to continue the line. Okay. And Rinsler has taken form molded leather to an extreme that even for us, we've never done <laughs> anything this complex, but it's a gorgeous suit, sexy if I may say so, and it really Definitely. is a badass outfit. And all of the orange areas, that's also reflective detailing, same okay. with the gloves, everything. And I will say, RPF exclusive, it's coming with active lights, okay? So oh. this is going to light up. Awesome. Now, the beauty about Rinsler is in the film, uh, while he's Rinsler, the lights are orange. Right. When he's Tron fighting for the users, he's got white. So not to be oh. outdone by myself, <laughs> we also introduced <laughs> the white version. And there's what That's the back awesome. of it looks like. Beautiful. So probably the most complex form molded leather suit that we've done, but the overall outcome, it's badass. I mean, I've, I'm so proud of how good this suit turned out. Fantastic. So I know UD Replicas always has a superhero suit. Tell me about your Daredevil suit here. Daredevil, uh, I've had a love-hate relationship <laughs> with, uh, with Daredevil because it, it, it's apparently a simple suit. I mean, there's a zipper down the middle, which was evident in the film as well. There's elastic ribbing, motorcycle style boots, so on and so forth. Typical, as yeah. far as normal clothing would go. Okay. But 
I mean, once we d dwelled into how the actual suit was made, and I, and I had the opportunity to, 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 to view the actual screen used oh, suit. Oh, wow. That's amazing. You know, yet again, I was like, now, now what do we do? <laughs> I mean, my understanding was that there was maybe a six-pack of some kind of foam muscle detailing in the abs. The more I looked at the screen used suit, it's a full ab section, almost like Batman. Oh, wow. And it goes all the way up to the ribs. I mean, there's a lot more going on just than what you see. Okay. Same with the pecs, the back, the whole V-shaped back muscle. It's all in there. So we did the same thing. Hence the love-hate relationship. <laughs> but um, the overall outcome is outstanding. The, the color of the leather is bang on. Oh, I love it. And we've gone as far oh, as wow. to manufacture the boots Check exactly the same out. as they are uh, on film. Oh, now, wow. for this show, my master boots are, are already uh, set for production. So we made a uh, pair quickly, but we actually made all the buckles as well. I didn't have time to, to inject the proper colored rubber which is what this is right here. So these are all okay. rubber plates that we engineered. Very cool. So we do it all. We do it all. Amazing. And uh, I, it's, a, I mean, lovely suit, lovely suit. Now, how do you, where, how do you make all of these things? I mean, where do you get all of this manufactured? How do you oversee all of that? Well, I mean, th th that's the most important part and probably the most difficult part. I think uh, the important thing is, for me is that we found a respectful and responsible balance between prototyping and production. So okay. I'm, I'm exclusively involved in the prototyping. Here's how the suit's got to be, here's how it's going to be made, and here's how we form mold the pieces. I mean, again, I come from a costume making background, so yeah. those techniques and assistance that I've, I've had from the RPF and growing into somebody who understands sculpting and mold making, we apply that to our leather work. So it's basically a merging of these two. Then, at that point, our factory takes over for the production and they are far better at sewing than I'll ever be. So the reality is the one-off can take time. I mean, some of these suits have taken eight, nine months to make oh, just wow. the one-off and that's me wow. working on it. But production-wise, we can do two, 3,000 a month. Oh, that's incredible. Okay. Once we get comfortable with yeah. the piece, otherwise <laughs> we got to take it slow too. But uh, yeah, and the end result, same with the belt. I mean, probably one of the most detailed accessories we've ever had to do. But if that's how it was on film, that's what we got to do it. I mean, the fans deserve no less, so the gray hairs in my head are a result <laughs> of us being obsessive about our details. Now, I got to say, this is probably one of your closest to the original suit, wouldn't you say? Well, yeah, for the simple fact that on film he wore a leather suit. Yeah. So now the suspension of, of disbelief factor with, say, the Stormtroopers where it's ABS. Uh, right or whatever armor, uh, Sintra, I'm not quite sure. But regardless, uh, in that case, it's some kind of plastic. Now we're using leather. But here, that's what he wore on film. So it's in that sense, it's easier for me to convey what we're doing, but it's also harder because people can look at my suit and then pull up their iPhone and say, well, that's how it was on film. You didn't do it that way and this way. So in that respect, it becomes twice as hard because we've got to sure. get it right. There's no excuse not to get it right. So Beautiful. Thank you. All right, David, you've saved the best for last. Is this your pride and joy? Well, you know, they're all my babies, but, um, you know, there is something special about uh, something as iconic as Captain America. I mean, you, you can't deny it. And yes, I'm from Canada, but at the same time, I'm not oblivious to the fact that he is as powerful in the United States and worldwide as he truly has become to be. So this has been my nightmare since I think we started effectively working on it in November and we're now at the end of July. So, I mean, we've been on this ferociously. And the reality is the movie suit, obviously it's a movie replica. Right. One of those scenarios where, again, they're using textiles. Wonderful, it, apply, it, work, it lends itself to what we're doing, but those were fabrics. We're working off of leather. So we've got to get the leather to look like what was seen on right. film in those fabrics. And that's where it becomes difficult. So I don't know if the camera can get it, but we do have the weave patterns in the blue. Which is incredible. I mean, the fact that you were able to dye the leather to actually look like fabric and have a pattern on it is just amazing. You can see it probably a little bit more in the sleeves, but um, not easy, not easy. No. And, and again, I don't ever claim to be perfect. I mean, everything that we do, every suit is new for us. So even in this case here, we had, I think, some of the blue that we applied over it uh, the term I like to use, I think it bled into the overall sense okay. of leather because it's supposed to be a much lighter blue along the lines of what you see here in the X-Wing artwork. It's a much lighter, more of a stonewash blue. Okay. Of course, we'll get it, but I think we have to start off with lighter bases in the event that we do have bleeding overall, that we don't end up with a darker leather. But detail-wise, I want to say it's bang on. And uh, of course, 
the idea of the zipper. We didn't want to go through. And these are all metal accessories, by the way. Oh, wow. All of them. Okay. So what incredible. happens is this front panel unzips, folds open, oh, wow. and then the full zipper underneath to open up the suit. It's amazing, too, because the zipper's almost completely hidden. I mean, you just don't even realize it's there. It looks like it's just you've got your harness going over the top of it. Yeah. So that's really slick. Well, what I'll tell you is this. It's going to be completely hidden because this is the prototype. So this blue strip of leather you see here uh -huh is going to disappear and oh, the seam wow. work here is going to disappear so basically the straps here are going to cover everything and it's going oh, to be completely great. seam it has to be seamless i mean like i said the fans deserve no less and um we're going to find a way to make it completely hidden so that nobody knows that the zipper's there Amazing. i mean we've got the adjustable straps in the arms all of the form molded detail in the shoulders here we've got uh, the gloves the belt all of this is a uh, aluminum die cast oh, wow. the boots down at the bottom Love the boots. it's it's all there the back also has all of the strap work on it I mean this has kept me awake for a long time so and I mean the shield is just for the display to help convey the whole iconic look of no course. we are not manufacturing and selling shields okay no props please do not send your emails to us we do not make props okay <laughs> So anyway, so that's it. And, um, you know, Gorgeous. a large collection this year. We've been very busy. And um, the one thing that I tell everybody about us is it's important that our products are what people gravitate towards. That said, customer service is equally as important, and if not more so, once you dwell into wanting to do business with us. I kindly ask everybody to be patient because we're, we usually get about a thousand emails a day. Oh, wow. And I personally take the phone calls when it's oh, regarding wow. sizing. Amazing. So people who are emailing and now that we have the new website up it can take about two sometimes even three weeks for us to get back so we okay. ask you please be patient um, you know we'll obviously get better with it but we're, we're being overwhelmed and it's a great feeling because yeah. it means we're obviously doing something right but we need to pick up the pace so one more time we ask <laughs> patience a little bit as as we get through them all so fantastic well yeah. David thank you so much for showing off your amazing suits I appreciate it pleasure is mine and I look forward to speaking with you soon Wonderful. RPF hi everybody and uh, guys thank you all right well this is Star Wars chick for the rpf.com www.udreplicas.com <laughs>